Hello and welcome to this video on how to run a multi-level confirmatory factor analysis in the M Plus software. My name is Christian Geiser, I'm an instructor with Quantfish. In this video I will walk you through the M Plus syntax for specifying a multi-level CFA and we will also take a look at the M Plus output for this type of model. So let's get started. In my example, I am looking at a two-factor multi-level CFA where the nested data structure arises from the fact that individuals were rated by two or more randomly selected raters. This could be, for example, randomly selected friends from their peer group on two separate traits, for example, personality variables. And so then in that situation, the raters are nested or the ratings of the raters are nested within the individuals. So the ratings are at level one and the values of the target individuals are at level two because the raters are nested within the targets. Let's first of all take a look at the data structure. So what does a data file need to look like for M plus when you run or want to run a multi-level analysis of any kind? And so an important issue here is that the data set needs to be in so-called long format. What does this mean? So long format as opposed to wide format. So here we would in a long format data set not have the variables of each rater as a separate column, but instead for multiple raters for the same variable, we have the same column. So let's take a look at that. And so here I have this data file multi-level CFA.dat open that we will be using. And so you can see that this data file has seven columns. The first six columns are for the indicators of the two factors. So each factor has three indicators. So we have a total of two factors times three indicators equals six variables. And then plus we have at the end a cluster variable. So this is the variable that identifies the uh, target individual. And so you can see that each individual here has two rows because there were two ratings per target, two randomly selected individuals rated each target. And so therefore this data set is in long format as opposed to wide format because we don't have 12 columns for all the indicators. So two by six, but instead the raters are represented by separate rows. So for example, the first two rows are for the same individual and those represent the different ratings by those two separate raters. And then the same for individual two, where also we have two ratings. Now we could have more than two ratings per individual. In that case, we would have more than two rows in our long format data set for each individual. Now in this case here we have only two raters each time but that need not be the case. So it can be imbalanced where you have maybe only one rater for some individuals and then 10 raters for another individual that would be fine that could be represented in the same way in this long format data set. Also if you have your data set in wide format where all the raters have separate columns in your data set, then you can easily transform this wide format data set into a long format data set using the wide to long data transformation that um, Mplus allows you to perform. And I have a separate video here on this channel where I show this data wide to long transformation in Mplus. So you can check that out in case you have your data set in wide format as opposed to long format. Now let's go back to our syntax. Let's take a look at how the multi-level CFA is specified. You can see that we have our use variables and our names of our variables listed here. So we have the six variables that refer to the different uh, factors and then we have the cluster variable that here is labeled as target. You could also call this ID or cluster or whatever you like. 
And then from this names list, we select our use variables where the first three are for trade one and the last three are for trade two. So we're measuring two different trades. However, there are two ratings for each person for each of these variables. Therefore, we need to use multi-level CFA. And we define our target variable as the cluster variable so that M plus knows how to distinguish level one where we have the raters from level two where we have our target individuals that are being rated. So that's important. You cannot run a multi-level analysis in M plus of any kind without a cluster variable that identifies the level one and level two units. And so this could be, for example, also a grouping variable. If you had individuals that are nested in groups, so for example, employees nested within companies, then the cluster variable would be the company ID. Or you could have longitudinal data where the different uh, time points are nested within individuals and then again the individual would be the cluster variable and each individual would have as many rows as you, as you have time points in a longitudinal data set. Next is the analysis command where we specify type equals two level so that M plus knows this is a multi-level analysis with two levels. And then also we specify as the estimator here maximum likelihood and I have a command added here to increase the number of iterations for the alternative hypothesis H1 model, because in this case, there weren't enough default iterations in M plus to get this model to converge. And so then with this command, you can increase the number of iterations where in this case, then convergence was achieved with 10,000 iterations here. Next is the model statement where we set up a model for both levels. In this case, we have the rater factors or method factors at level one and in M plus the level one is referred to as the within level. And so this is in this case, the rater level. So within persons where we have multiple ratings. And in this case, we specify a separate rater factor for trade one and for trade two. So R1 indicates the rata or method effect that may be observed for trade one. And so this factor reflects divergence between the different ratings. So if the raters do not agree on the target, then that is reflected in the variance of that rater factor for trade one. And we also have one for trade two so that the rater effect may differ across those two trades. R1 and R2 can be correlated. That correlation is estimated by default in M plus. And so that correlation tells us whether the rater effect generalizes across the two trades. The higher the correlation, the more there is a generalization of the rater effect across trades. In this case, I'm assuming a tau equivalent measurement structure so that the loadings here are all fixed to one. So all indicators have equal loadings under tau equivalence. This is not required. So there may be situations where you want to leave some of the loadings free. So we only need to fix one loading for identification. The other loadings could in principle be estimated freely. In this case, they are fixed to one for tau equivalence. Next is the between level where we specify our trade factors. And so T1 is the trade factor for the first trade. Here we have the same measurement model with fixed loadings, again, assuming tau equivalence for these variables. And then subsequently we estimate the trade factor means and we set all intercepts in this case to zero for tau equivalence. And so that is also something that is not technically required. You could have a measurement structure where you have different intercepts for different variables. So you could leave some of those intercepts free to estimate. And then importantly, all residual variances at level two are fixed to zero. And that's because the measurement error variances are estimated at level one already. So we need not also estimate error variances at level two in this model. Measurement error is a level one 
issue, so to say, where it's estimated at the rater level and at level two, we have no error variances. So these all need to be fixed to zero in this model. We also request sample statistics as well as the standardized solution for our output so that we can take a look at descriptive statistics as well as standardized parameter estimates. When we scroll down, we can see that in this data set, we had 1000 observations. And so of importance, this does not mean the number of individuals in this case, but this actually means the total number of data points. So in this case, we had two raters for each target and we had only 500 target individuals. And so two times 500 equals 1000. So this is important to keep in mind because here with number of observations and plus means the total number of observations, meaning the number of raters times the number of target individuals. When we scroll down a little bit further, we can see that under number of clusters, we obtain the sample size in terms of the number of individuals. So there were 500 individuals total and we had an average cluster size of two because each individual had two ratings. And so that again gives us the total number of observations. Two times 500 is 1000, which is the number that you find here at the top under number of observations. Next, M plus reports the intra class correlations for the observed variables. And you can see that these are all sizable ranging from 0.312 to 0.444, indicating that there was some convergence between the, the different ratings. So there was some variance at the between level and between level variance here is the variance that or reflects the variance that is shared across different raters for a given target. So those indicate the, those intra-class correlation coefficients indicate convergent validity across the different raters. Now it's not spectacularly high, indicating that there was also that there was some method effects, some rater specific effects such that the raters did not perfectly agree on those ratings. Next are sample statistics. And when you run a multi-level analysis in M plus, M plus will provide sample statistics both for the within level, level one, and for the between level. Now, in, at the within level, M plus does not estimate means. So all the means are zero at level one, but M plus does estimate a covariance matrix for level one, as well as a correlation matrix for level one. And then at the between level, we get the means of the variables and then also a between level covariance and a between level correlation matrix. And those are analyzed separately in M plus um, with the different models at level one and level two. So a model is fit to the level one covariance matrix and a model is also fit to the level two covariance matrix. And we specified that in our model statement. Now scrolling down further, we also get univariate sample statistics and then subsequently model fit information. In this case, the model estimation terminated normally. This may not always be the case. When you run a multi-level CFA, there can be a whole bunch of issues because it's a very complicated type of analysis. And so when you have a relatively low level two sample size, then there can be problems, for example. So as a general rule, you should have at least 100 clusters and preferably more than 100 clusters as a sufficient sample size for a multi-level CFA. In this case, we have 500 clusters, so 500 individuals, so that should be more than plenty. And um, in this case also, you can see there's no estimation problem here. When we scroll down, we obtain a chi-square test of model fit. And in this case, you can see the model fits the data well. The chi-square p-value is 0.16, which is not statistically significant at the 0.05 level. So this model does not have to be rejected. And other fit statistics also look good for this model. We have a, an RMSEA of 0.015. We have CFI and TLI above 0.99, and also the standardized root mean square residual for both within and between is below 0.05, which indicates decent model fit. 
Next, we obtain the parameter estimates. And first, for level one, the within level, you can see the loadings are all fixed to one. So those are not interesting to look at in this case, at least not in the unstandardized metric. And then in addition to that, we get the covariance between the two rata factors at level one, as well as their variances estimated by default, and also the error variances that are provided for the observed variables. As we will see, more interesting in this case is the standardized solution where we obtain the correlation between the two rata factors, which tells us more than the covariance, which is kind of difficult to interpret. Next are the parameter estimates for the between level. And again, the factor loadings here are all fixed to one. So those are not interesting to look at, but we get an estimate of the trade factor covariance. Again, the correlation in the standardized solution will be easier to interpret. We also get the estimated factor means. The intercepts in this case were all fixed to zero for tau equivalence, which again, that's not a necessary thing to do in other models, you might choose a less restricted measurement structure where intercepts can be estimated for some or all of the variables. If you estimate them for all of the variables, you would not be able to estimate the latent means. And then also we get the variances of the two factors estimated at level two for the two traits. Now, as I said, a little bit more informative in this example is the standardized solution where we can find the standardized factor loadings at the within level. You can see those are in this case all above 0.8. So they indicate that the, those measures are decent measures of the level one rate factors. We also obtain the correlation between the two rate factors at level one, which is 0.41, indicating that there is some generalization of the rate effect across the two traits. So raters who overestimated a target individual with regard to one trait tended to also overestimate that individual's trade score on the second trait. However, it's not very pronounced, this correlation indicating that those raters were distinguishing between those two traits and were rating them differently in general. Furthermore, we get the level one standardized residual variances here. And then at the between level, we get the uh, factor correlation between the trade factors, which here was 0.69 and fairly high. So this indicates that there was relatively little discriminant validity between those two traits, or we could say the traits were strongly related to one another, strongly positively related. This is a pretty sizable correlation. And we also obtain at the bottom the R squared values for the within level. So those are the squared standardized loadings for the level one rater factor loadings. And then at the between level, you can see all the R squared values are one because there are no residual variances estimated at the between level in this model. I hope you found this video useful to learn about how to specify a multi-level CFA model in the M plus software. If you did, please subscribe to this channel. Check out the description for additional resources, including courses on factor analysis and multi-level analysis with M plus and other programs that you can find below this video. And I'll see you next time.